Yo, so in today's video, I'll be showing you my 8 month progression from controller to keyboard and mouse. You guys will see the very start all the way up until today and how I was able to progress at such a fast rate. I'll not only be sharing the best tips and tricks to improve as fast as possible, but also how to find the perfect keybinds, sensitivity, warm up, and so much more. A lot of these tricks that I'm about to show you are not too well known about, so I guarantee that you have not heard about a lot of them. So with all that being said, let's get right into this video. Okay, so starting it off with day one, the very first thing I did was look at a couple of Fortnite keybinds videos, and every time I watched it, I would take the keybinds and test them out in creative. If a specific keybind felt awkward or hard for me to press, I would change it. After doing this over and over again, I basically got a group of keybinds from a bunch of different videos that I finally felt comfortable pressing without anything being too awkward. It took me about one hour to find the keybinds that worked for me, and this is something that many people fail to understand or do. They rush getting their keybinds just so they can get right into creative and just build, but all they're doing is setting themselves up for a bad progression, which causes a lot of people to ultimately switch back to controller. Choosing the right keybinds and sensitivity is by far the most important thing when switching to keyboard and mouse. So I highly recommend that you take your time when searching for keybinds, and it's completely fine if it takes you more than an hour. To be honest, that's even better. Let me put it this way, it's better to spend 2 or 3 hours looking for keybinds that fit you and you can practice with comfortably, instead of spending 10 minutes on keybinds just to change them later down the road. You will just be messing up all of your muscle memory. After I got all my keybinds and sensitivity sorted, I just went right into creative and spent my time getting used to all my new keybinds. The first thing that I practiced were my 90s, and after practicing them for a bit, I was actually not too bad. I would occasionally mess up, but for the most part, my 90s were pretty good, especially for my first day. This gave me a lot of confidence that my keybinds were perfect for me, and I just thought that the longer I stick with these keybinds, the better I will get. I continued to practice my building, but this time instead of doing 90s, I started to do basic tunneling. I was also pretty good with my tunneling, even though there wasn't any editing, I was at least able to do some basic building. However, there is still so much room for improvement, which I'll be showing you later in this video. I wanted to speed up my edit, so I decided to practice them in an edit course. After practicing them for a long time, I was already able to see more consistency in my edits. It's very important that at the start of your progression, you spend a lot of time practicing your new keybinds, because these are the building blocks for the rest of your keyboard and mouse journey. I wanted to practice my editing in a different kind of way, so I decided to switch to some edit towers. I did mess up quite a lot, but the same thing as before, after practicing for a bit, I got pretty consistent with it. I hope that after seeing my day 1 progression all the way up to my 8 month progression, this could motivate you to make the full switch from controller to keyboard and mouse, whether you're just thinking about switching or recently switched. Now that you guys saw how I played without pressure, let me show you how bad I really was when the pressure was on me. My fighting was just terrible and basically everything that I just practiced was thrown out the window. This is completely normal and happens to everyone, so if you're experiencing this, just know you're not the only one. In this clip you're looking at right now, you can see just how bad I was, not only with my aim, but I was also just misclicking all my keybinds. You can even see that I accidentally opened up the menu in the middle of the fight. Your boy was legit a bot. Many of you guys have no idea where to start or even what to do when you first switch to keyboard and mouse. So that brings up the question of how I got from this all the way up until this, and the honest answer is it had to do a lot with my warm-up routine and how much time I spent doing it. For the first two months, I spent almost all my time in creative practicing these four maps, which cover everything from building to aim and even peace control. So the first and probably one of the most important maps on this list was Raiders Crosser Placement Movement Training. Inside of this map, you will have a red line or circle letting you know where you need to edit. Running through all the different scenarios takes about 10 minutes, which is only half an arena game, and it's one of the most beneficial 10 minutes you will ever spend on Fortnite. This helps a lot with making small and precise edits, which ultimately makes your edits a lot faster. Also, because you're doing so many edits over and over again, your edits will basically be so warmed up that you will not miss any of your edits for the rest of the day. The next map, which is just as important or even more important, are aim duels. All my subscribers know that I love this map, but for every Everyone new watching this video, first of all, thank you so much for stopping by, and secondly, back to the aim duels, the reason I like this map so much is because it's so realistic, since you're going against a real player and not just shooting at some bots. Since you're going against a real player, everything you do from tracking to flicking would be the exact same in an actual arena game, so it's just a great way to practice your aim. Not to mention that it only takes about 10 minutes. I actually neglected doing any aim training maps for the first month of keyboard and mouse, which is why my aim struggled during that time. Ever since I started doing aim duels, my aim has improved drastically. The problem is that when a lot of players switch to keyboard and mouse, all they want to do is make builds invisible or try and do a triple edit, but that will not help you out in a real game. So I highly recommend doing aim duels when you first switch to keyboard and mouse. The map code is up on screen right now. 
Besides my skill base on Fortnite has improved, so did the size of my channel. Just one month ago, we were at 18k subs, and now we're at 30k. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the support. There's just one thing I want to quickly ask, and it's that YouTube has been telling me that 67% of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribed. And the 32.5% of you guys that are subscribed, only one third of you guys actually have notifications. So if you're already subscribed, just make sure that you have noties on. Let's get right back into this video. Now we're going to be getting into everyone's favorite part, which is the building. One of the best maps that I found for building is the Crank Simulator Infinity. Instead of this map, you'll find a lot of custom options, such as your character's outer glow or the background of the map, but that's besides the point. What makes this map super useful is that whenever you fall, it will automatically reset so you can continue cranking or free building. However, the best feature is that you basically can never reach the height limit, because as soon as you touch it, you will be automatically teleported right back down, so you can keep free building. You may have noticed a trend, and that's that you have to do everything one step at a time. This is what keyboard and mouse is about, and I'd like to advise you to please take your time when switching to keyboard and mouse. It will take time, and you cannot skip over any of the basics. In other words, you cannot be trying to learn face sway retakes if you can barely do 90s. It just doesn't work that way. So for the last map, all my subs are very familiar with this map. So I'll make this pretty quick, but the map I'm talking to you about is Raider's Peace Control Practice Map. Yes, I know basically all these maps are from Raider 464. I'm basically a Raider fanboy. Raider just released a new version of this map, but whether you use version 1, 2, or 3 of Raider Peace Control, they all have really good peace control scenarios. In each of these maps, you'll find around 15 different scenarios which you can run through, with all of them being a bunch of different peace control drills, which are very beneficial in-game. This is probably my favorite out of the four maps, not only because it improves your peace control, but also your editing. Every single month I say this, but I improve more and more, especially in my peace control. I hope that by looking at the clips on screen right now, you can tell just how much my peace control has improved. My peace control has just gotten so good, and it's basically muscle memory at this point when I box people up. I'm glad to know that all my hard work grinding all the different creative maps, especially Raider's peace control practice map, has really helped me out. It is such a good feeling when you look at your very first day of keyboard mouse and compare it to now. And like I said, it all comes down to the dedication and how much work you put in. Over the past two months, I've been focusing a lot on arena and I've accumulated over 20k arena points. I stream every day at 3pm eastern time and actually the day this video is going up, it will be my 50th day in a row of daily streaming. So be sure to see the big Vermax getting some W's on stream or just to say hi. Since I've been spending so much time in arena, I've basically noticed that my game sense has improved a lot. After I played arena so much, I've definitely noticed that I've become a better overall player. I've just been W king a lot, so as a result, I end up dying a lot, obviously. But it's better to die and learn from your mistakes, instead of camping in arena, which will not help you as a player at all. With my entire 8 month progression, there's only one main thing that I regret, and that is not switching earlier. I always think if I switch earlier, I would have been this much better, or I could have made earnings if I switched during World Cup days. So please, if you're thinking about switching, just see how far it takes you in just one month. I assure you, unless you're doing something wrong, you'll be better on keyboard and mouse than you were on controller. This is one of the most useful pieces of advice I can give you guys. Just switch to keyboard and mouse as soon as possible. With all that being said, I wish you guys the best of luck in your progressions, and I hope the tips and tricks in this video helped you out at least a little bit. If they did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future uploads. I put a lot of time into this video, so a sub or at least a like would be greatly, I mean greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Twitter and I'll be responding to everyone. I'd like to quickly plug in my code, so please be sure to use code VERMAX in the item shop. We currently have 303 people using code VERMAX, and we're trying to get 700 people using it by the end of the month, so please be sure to pop it in. If you're looking for someone to play with, we have a Discord server with over 7 750 people in the server, so there are a lot of people you can find. The link to the server will be down below. With all that being said, it's been your boy Vermax. Stay safe and take care.